everybody. I'm Cassidy, one of your Indianapolis Colts cheerleaders, and you're watching the Believe in Colts podcast. What's going on, Colts Nation? I'm Lawrence Owen, back with another edition of Believe in Colts, brought to you by Bet Online. And today, I know a lot of you have been waiting on this. This is my breakdown of the wide receiver prospects that the Indianapolis Colts can take a look at in the first two rounds of the 2024 NFL Draft. Now, there is a lot of smoke this time of year. Every player from every position that is in this draft that your team is considered to have sitting as a position of need is going to be linked to your team. So, you know, cornerbacks, uh, pass rushers, safeties, wide receivers, Brock Bowers, you know, all these guys, like nearly every one of them are going to be linked to the Indianapolis Colts walking into this draft now that we're about two weeks away from the draft. It's just everybody, teams are going to have, uh, you know, scouts at every place that they can. And if there's even a reasonable chance that they could draft them in the first two rounds, most likely, if it's a position of need, it's they're going to end up getting a, a, a visit, right? They're going to have one of those, you know, top 30 visits for that player. You should not read into anything uh, that is reported by people. Oh, the Colts are going to trade up for this guy, or the Colts might trade back for this guy, or the Colts are going to shock and go get this guy. There's so much smoke, you're not going to be able to see the fire, okay? So don't worry about that. What we can do is look in, look at the guy, uh, each player's, you know, actual specifics, what they bring to the table, and whether or not they fit with the Colts. That will give you a decent idea, in my opinion, on whether the Indianapolis Colts might be interested them in them. Right now, there's a lot of you know, talk, maybe the Colts will move up in the draft to go get Malik Neighbors. Well, maybe they will. I don't know. You know, there was talk about, well, would you move up in the draft to go get Marvin Harrison? I mean, it's possible. I don't think it's going to happen. It's going to take an awful lot to make that move. It's going to take an awful lot to go up to get Malik Neighbors. But it could happen. But right now, before we get too deep into it, I need to remind everybody that Bet Online is still your number one source for all your betting needs. Get the latest odds, lines, and matchup reports for baseball, boxing, golf, NFL, and more. Bet Online continues to be the fastest and easiest way to place your wagers, including live betting and your favorite casino and card games available to play right from your phone. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and get in on the action. Remember, Use promo code BELIEVE, that's B-L-E-A-V, to receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online, where the game starts. Now, let's jump straight into it because, look, I don't know of a single Indianapolis Colts fan that would not love to have, in my opinion, the top wide receiver prospect in this draft. All right? I get it. All right? He is his dad is frankly his dad is my favorite offensive player for the Indianapolis Colts ever, you know, Marvin Harrison. And this kid actually looks like possibly a better prospect than Marvin Harrison. All right, he's bigger and quicker and stronger. Uh but and and, and he's and he's because of his ability. Because it's it's no doubt in my mind because Marvin Harrison is his father and taught him a lot. A guy standing six three at two oh nine should not be able to move the way this guy moves. All right, uh, without question, he's going to be a top five guy. He's going to go top five in this draft uh, unless there are serious trade ups for other teams to grab quarterbacks in this draft. He's he's going top five. Okay. Um, some of the better, uh, he's, he, you can't really equate Marvin Harrison Jr. to Marvin Harrison coming out of this draft. He's more 
like a, an AJ Green or something of that nature, right? A little bit uh, uses size more, but his his route running is absolutely superb for a guy standing 6'3", 209. Not the fastest guy, right? Straight line speed, not the fastest guy in this draft, not even close. He runs a four, just under a four five zero. okay? But his ability to change directions, uh, not let, you know, not give off a tip in which direction he's going to change. His route running is absolutely superb, superb. Do I think the Colts will move up to get him? Probably not. Uh, I, a, a, a one in 20 chance, in my opinion. Uh, and it would take an absolute ton to go up and get him. Uh, would he be worth it? In my opinion, probably. I just don't think it's going to happen. But he is definitely my number one choice in this draft. Uh, coming in at number two is Malik Neighbors, so the guy I uh, talked about earlier, wide receiver out of LSU. Uh, another guy, he's six foot, about 200 pounds, runs slower. He's got a slower top end speed than Marvin Harrison, right? I just talked about how he's just under 4'5". Well, Malik is just over 4'5", okay? But... He, very similarly to Marvin Harrison, has incredible route running, great quickness in the short field, right? And that big play ability. He's able to just, he's unbelievable when it comes to being able to uh, cut side to side, uh, find open spaces, and make something happen after the catch. Uh, he's just a very smooth receiver. Now, my problem is he's six foot and under 200 pounds, okay? He could be a number two. I don't think he can be a number one receiver in the league, all right? And when I say number one, I mean that big, strong, outside X receiver, okay? I feel like he's that complimentary guy on the other side. Now, I'm not saying that he can't, you know, turn out numbers of a number one receiver. But for instance, T.Y. Hilton, right? T.Y. Hilton could turn out the numbers of a number one wide receiver. He was the go-to guy, but he didn't play the X position. All right, he played slot or the number two position on the outside. And I'm okay with that. The NFL needs those guys, right? Absolutely. And neighbors could be maybe the best at doing that in my opinion, in this draft, whereas Marvin Harrison Jr. is definitely an X receiver, okay? Neighbors is a guy I feel like will go top 10, no questions asked, and it would still take a nice chunk for the Colts to move up from 15 to go get him. I don't know the, uh, now, historically, uh, Chris Ballard and company have not moved up. There's a lot of movement right now saying that the Colts are interested in possibly moving up to go get him. Uh, again, you know, beware of smoke. <laughs> this, uh, it, it, it would take quite a bit. And you know how uh, Ballard loves having his, his picks. But let's, let's face it. The Colts right now are loaded down with a lot of talent on this team. They are just maybe two guys, in my opinion, on offense or defense of exceptional players to be able to make that next jump and become a premier playoff team, okay? As long as they can stay healthy. That's that's the thing. The Colts have a ton of Pro Bowl, all pro guys on their team, a lot of talent. They just need a couple, uh, just a little bit more there. To, to make that next jump. Malik Neighbors could be that guy. It wouldn't take nearly as much in mind. Now, a lot of people were out there, well, Malik Neighbors might be picked over Marvin Harrison Jr. Anyone who watches tape is going to be like, no. All right? Just was flat out. So he's going to go number two. The question is, how close to number, how close to Marvin Harrison is he going to get picked? Uh, uh, it depends upon team needs in this draft, right? Uh, but wide receiver is still considered, you know, highly coveted in the NFL, even though a lot of wide receivers have been out there 
uh, over the last few years in the draft, taken a very high. I think Neighbors is a guy who will still go top 10. And more likely the Colts could move up to get him, but I doubt they will uh, considering the situation that, that they currently have. Could they get more numbers out of their number two outside guy? Possibly. But from what I understand, they really like what they got out of Alec Pierce. And is Neighbors that much better than Pierce? Uh, he's slower than Pierce, but he's got better route running and quickness than Pierce does. So we'll we'll see what the Indianapolis Colts want to do there. But I don't know. I wouldn't mind having Neighbors. I think he's a. I think he would fit well. We'll see what goes on after that. Next guy on my list is Roma Dunze, uh, 6'3", 201. little bit quicker than Marvin Harrison at four four five. Um, ooh, this dude, he's dangerous. He's dangerous on the outside. He look. He's got enough speed, in my opinion, to get separation. But his big thing for me is 50-50 ball ability and back shoulder catching ability. All right. He's absolutely amazing at both of those. And he's he reminds me a lot, and I'm not kidding here. He reminds me a lot of Michael Pittman Jr., okay? Uh, the big, strong, uh, strong hands at the uh, point of the catch, you know, stuff of that nature, catching at the high point, um, being able to make contested catches, things of that nature. Uh, he's got great character, uh, good makeup around him. There's no questions about whether or not he's going to be, you know, someone that'll be uh, tough to to fit into a team and get along with others. I like Rome. I think this is an absolute solid guy. He's going to be somebody who is going to absolutely be great at his position, in my opinion. Okay. Um, maybe one of the better all around guys, right? In this draft, he's, I, I feel like he'll be a top 15 guy maybe drop the top 20. Odunze is a guy who I believe could be there at 15 when the Indianapolis Colts pick and could end up being selected. We'll see what happens in the upcoming draft. Next guy on the list, Brian Thomas Jr. All right. The opposite end, 6'2", 209, another big dude, but man, let's talk about his quickness. 433. All right. 6'2, 209 and runs a 433. That's some pretty impressive size, speed, and athleticism. Right. He's got some serious upside, but don't expect Brian Thomas Jr. to be NFL ready walking out as a as a rookie uh in 20 in the 2024 season. All right. He doesn't run really good routes. He drops passes. And he plays with finesse rather than with strength for his size at being 6'2", 210, okay? He's not someone that I think, look, this is another guy that I feel like is closer to Alec Pierce, okay? Very similar to Alec Pierce all the way around, size, speed, how he plays, that kind of stuff. And uh, the same reason that Alec Pierce is taking a little bit of time to develop, right? Because he, he had all the, the the athleticisms and the numbers and the skill sets, but he wasn't ready for the NFL. I feel the same way about Brian Thomas Jr., okay? It's going to take him a couple years, maybe three, in order to get in and get the full amount out of Brian Thomas. And he's really going to have to uh, put a lot at work and effort and coaching in order to get him to that level. And he may may or may not reach that level. So, you know, I personally would not spend a first-round pick on Brian Thomas, but because of his size, speed, and athleticism, 
I think a lot of people in this draft will, a lot of teams will look at him as that next level guy, that next level guy behind uh, your top two. And he'll probably go in the first round. Somewhere in the top 20, most likely. Next guy on my list. Look, records are meant to be broken. All right. And wide receiver out of Texas, Xavier Worthy. He did just that. All right. He snapped that 4 2 240 time at the combine, uh, running a 4 2 1. But let's, let's face it. All right. Dude is a explosive playmaker. Explosive playmaker. You are going to take a little bit of a uh, chance on this guy, though. All right. If you draft him. I do feel like he's also a guy, be just straight up because of his speed, he'll probably be a first rounder. Absolutely ridiculous speed. Um, but he's definitely a slot guy. 5'11, 165. You heard me right. 165. He is a bean pole, a little uh, a smaller receiver and a bean pole. But he is so fast, so fast. But how many receivers have we seen in the league that have that came in that's been picked up that has absolute elite ridiculous speed, but were small and weren't able to uh, fit in properly in the league? I can name a few, all right, that a lot of people thought, ooh, this guy's going to be great. You know, the Bengals drafted one of those guys, what, about 10 years back, right? Never really did anything with him. Um, Xavier, however, I feel like could be uh, more of a exception than the rule, all right? Because not only is he fast, he's also explosive, all right? And he's dangerous with the ball in his hands. Um, I feel like he is a guy who can get uh, find the open spot uh, playing from the slot. Uh, th- my only biggest worry is his size, right? He, his size, he could end up getting hurt. He's going to have to learn. Uh, in the NFL, you're going to have to protect yourself a lot. You're going to have to go down. Remember, T.Y. Hilton was really good at just going down. He'd catch the ball, get what he could, and whenever a guy got near him, he'd just slide, right? Xavier Worthy, Worthy will have to take that mentality, all right? He's going to have to take that type of mentality. Don't be a guy who feels like you could just get around somebody and take it to the house. He's a dude that absolutely could do that. All right. But if you feel that there's a chance that somebody beating in on you, you know, could could take a shot on you, get down. All right. Uh, be available for the next play. Uh, Worthy is a guy, depending upon where teams need. All right, he's definitely a slot guy. The Colts just drafted their slot guy last year, and they really have a lot of liking with him. I don't think the Indianapolis Colts will pick up Xavier Worthy. However, you never know. If because of his size, the worries about his size um, allows him to drop some in this draft, if he drops to early second round, huh, you definitely go and, you know, I, I would move up early second round to pick up a guy like this. But I would not use my 15th pick of the overall in the draft to grab Xavier Worthy, in my opinion, if I was Ballard and the Colts. Next guy on my list is uh, Adonai Mitchell. All right. 6'2", 205, very quick. Very, very quick. Um, uh, has got a lot. I mean, he's, he's got everything, uh, four, three, four speed, six, two, two Oh five. Like I said, wide receiver out of Texas. Um, he's got length, large cat catch radius. He's got great straight line speed. My issue with him, he doesn't have that change of direction, right? Um, he doesn't 
stop and go, change direction when you're like, like when it comes to route running and stuff of that nature. Not that I'm saying that he can't uh, acquire that with um, some coaching and some workouts. It has a lot to do with your tendons and muscles and, and just working that kind of stuff in. But right now, I don't know. All right. Another uh, thing is he has a medical concern. He does have diabetes. Okay. Uh, now, there are plenty of players in the NFL that have diabetes that have had a lot, a lot of uh, success. I'm not saying that if you have diabetes, you can't have success in the NFL. That is a false statement. I'm just saying it's a tougher road for those that do because they have certain uh, requirements, uh, meal-wise and, and, and dietary and, and uh, how you um, work out, things of that nature, uh, in order to stay elite in the league. Uh, Mitchell is a very, very good wide receiver. I feel like Mitchell should go ahead. All right. I really do feel like he should go ahead of, uh, worthy. The guy I mentioned before with all the speed, however, because of his change of direction ability and the fact that he does have diabetes, it might drop him to a mid second round pick. And, that for me would make him an absolute steal if he could fall to the Colts in the second round. An absolute steal. Those are my top six guys. All right. Now, there are other guys in this draft. I feel like you could get uh, Xavier Leggett, uh, for instance, I feel like could be a guy that you could go get as well. Keon Coleman is another guy out of Florida State. Both these guys, big, strong, wide receivers. Uh, I think Leggett has a bit of a uh, a leg up <laughs> on, on Coleman. Uh, but at the same time, two guys, I would not be surprised. They definitely have wide receiver two or X receiver skills uh, size. And But the, the Coleman doesn't have the, the top end speed, all right? He is all about just strength and catching, all right? Whereas Leggett is much faster. Coleman is uh, tall. Leggett, he's, he's got size too at 6'1", 221. Keon Coleman, 6'3", 2, 213. But, but Coleman's speed, it, it, he's, he's lower than a 4'6". And for a wide receiver, that's a killer, okay? For a wide receiver, that's a killer, whereas Leggett runs under a 4-4. Four four. So that's why Coleman, I don't think he's going to make it. Uh, I don't think he's going to be drafted in the second round. I think he's going to fall in the third, um, if that. But Leggett has a real shot in the second. Guys, those right there are my top guys at wide receiver for the NFL draft. I want you to let me know in the comments who you like most, who you would do. Would you trade up in the draft to go get uh, one of the top two guys, right? Um, even though it would probably cost a ton. Or would you just sit? Would you trade back, you know? Is wide receiver even a position that you feel like the Colts should use in the first round? Let me know in the comments. And if you're listening to this on an audio podcast, please uh, rate me and 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 leave uh, comments uh, so that others can know that you enjoy the podcast as well. And I think that's going to do it for this episode of Believe in Colts brought to you by Bet Online. I'm Lawrence Owen, and as usual, go Colts. Do you believe? 